So array in the sense what? It is a collection of multiple values. I will be using the keyword called new. So this keyword will allocate the memory, whatever the array that I have created. So array list has got some of the predefined methods, which will help me to perform a lot of operations on an array. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session in the .NET programming that's going to be on handling arrays. So guys, yes, uh, you would have heard about this topic a number of times because you know you will study this topic in the C programming, C++, Java, in almost all the concepts, uh, whatever the programming language that you have studied. So in all the programming language, you would have come across with a concept called arrays. But yes, I will not stretch more on in detail about the arrays since you all know about it. But of course, I will stress on the topics which you don't know. All right, without wasting much of your time again. So let me get into the session. What do I have in the session for all of you? So I will be discussing how do I uh, handle the array? What is the concept of arrays with respect to the one dimensional array? And also I will show you how to create the arrays. No big deal in that. You all know about it. Two dimensional arrays. A most important topic that's going to be uh, for the day is a variable size array. Probably this, this could be a new thing for you. And then along with that, system.array class along with that, the last topic, array list class. This is going to be the three important new thing that you will learn. So don't forget to watch the session till the end because the topic which is important is at the end of the session. All right, so let's start the session. What exactly that I have here? So guys, uh, first topic that I have here is all about one dimensional array. So guys, array in the sense what? So I have a is equal to 10. So here a is a variable. So I have one value. So now the challenge for me is I need to store more than one value in one single variable. So how do I solve this problem? So to solve this problem, what I will be doing is I will be creating an array. So array in the sense what? It is a collection of multiple values, more than one value of same type. Here I have only one value, but for the same name, I can store multiple value. That is what you need to remember. That is the first point that you need to remember. I will be able to store multiple value of same type. And also you should remember, I will be having something called index. So this is what I will be calling it as an index. Always the index of the array starts from zero. So that's what you need to remember. So why do I need index? So guys, with the help of the index, I will be able to access each and every value, individual value, each and every individual value that I have in the array. So that is what you need to remember. So my dear students, this is what I will call it as a one dimensional array. Sir, this in the sense what? If you guys are representing your values in one single row, that is what I will call it as a one dimensional array. Now you got a basic idea about the array. So fine, moving forward. This is how I will be storing or I will be initializing the one dimensional array. So what is this? Sir, what is this number that you have taken here? Number is the name of the array that I have here. I will have the memory representation of the array. Just imagine like this. Here I have number. Okay, what is this number? Number is the name of the array. Number is the name of the array. So fine. So number of zero. Zero in the sense what? This is the locations that I have. All right. This is the location that I have. Zero. One, two, three, four. Let's imagine like this. Number of zero in the sense, the first location. So they have given 35. 35 is getting stored in this location. So in this location, in the sense what? Number of zero. Number of zero in the sense, this location 35 is getting stored. So fine. What is the next one? Number of one. So number of one, 40 is getting stored in this location. So observe here, 40 is what I'm trying to store here. In the same way, guys, in the second location, I'm trying to store 20. In the third location, I'm trying to store, observe, is it third location? 0, 1, 2, 3. So fourth location. So 57 and then the next location I have 19. This is how I will be storing the elements inside the array or I will be accessing the elements of this array. So guys, so hope you understood the basic concepts that we have with respect to the one dimension array. Now, it's very important that how do I create an array? How do I declare an array? How do I initialize the array? So that's a very important part that we need to understand. 
till now we have understood the concept of array so now let's understand the syntax part that's very very important because syntax is entirely different when it comes to the c hash all right so fine declaring an array what is the syntax that i have to follow to declare an array so guys the first thing that you have to mention is data type say for example i need to create the array of type integer so fine what is the first thing that i have to write i need to specify the data type followed by i have to use the square brackets open and close then followed by i should have the name of the array that is what you need to remember so observe here name of the array that's what you need to mention so i'll just consider it as a number so name of the array then semicolon this is how i will be declaring an array so fine we understood the syntax so what is that data type square bracket open and close then followed by you will have the name of the array at the end of the statement obviously you will have the semicolon that's very important that you should never forget moving forward to the next one how do i create an array so create an array creation of an array what is the meaning of it i should allocate the memory to the array whatever i have declared so how do i allocate the memory for the array which i have declared so guys i will be using the keyword called new so this keyword will allocate the memory whatever the array that i have created that's what you need to remember so fine what is the array that you have created here you have created the array the array name as number so for that let us allocate some memory how do i allocate so observe here i have to write the array name array name is what number so after that i have to use assignment operator then new is a keyword that is the operator which i am using to allocate the memory to this array so fine after that you have to use type you have to mention the type data type okay what type of array that you are trying to create i am trying to create integer type so you have to specify that type that is integer here and then within the square brackets you have to specify how much of memory that you want to allocate that is what i have specified here all right so this is the syntax for the creation of array moving forward to the next topic that i have here how do i initialize an array how do i initialize the value to array we have already discussed so guys this is how we will be initializing the array so with the help of index or the subscript so we will be initializing the value so this number is the name of the array so fine you got the name of the array to which location you want to store the value that is what you have to mention here this is the index value so to this location i need to store so that's what you need to mention it here so fine 35 is the value that i have in the right hand side so i'm using the assignment operator the beauty of the assignment operator whatever the value that you have in the right hand side will get assigned to the left hand side so fine when it get assigned to the left hand side to which location so number of zero to this location i need to assign this so like that i will be initializing the values when it comes to the array so that's especially one dimensional array so what is the syntax that you need to remember array name that's what i have mentioned it here and then subscript in the sense you can also call it as index of an array so fine you will be mentioning the index of an array is equal to value what you want to store and you have to be very particular uh, what type of value that you want to store because we have already discussed what type of array that you are trying to create so this is the basic thing that all of you know i think you know all this content will be a repetitive for all of you so let me not uh, drag too much on this uh array length if i want to know the length of an array so what is the length of an array the number of elements that i have in the array i will be using the name of the array dot length okay this will give me the length of the array i will be storing in this variable and i will be printing that which gives me the exact length of the array the number of elements that i have inside the elements i will be getting to know with the help of array name dot length okay that's what you need to remember so a here is a array name which i have taken suppose the array what i have taken here is a number so for that i will be giving number dot length that's what you need to observe here so that's the important point that you need to remember with respect to the length moving forward to the next one that i have two dimensional array guys a matrix or a table is what i will call it as a two dimensional array so here i need to learn how do i declare two dimensional array and how do i initialize two dimensional array that's very very important here so when it comes to the index it is entirely different from the one dimensional array so what is that we need to understand with respect to the two dimensional array is very important thing let's check and understand so guys when it comes to the two dimensional array especially in c hash so this is the syntax that we need to follow whenever i'm declaring so what is the syntax observe i have to specify the type that is data type of the array 
then you have to open the square bracket and you have to close. So in between, you should never forget that you have to use comma. When you, you guys were discussing one dimension array, I was not mentioning any comma, but when it comes to the two dimension array, you have to mention comma. That's an important thing that you need to remember. And then you have to mention the name of the array. So this is how you will declare the two dimensional array. So fine. Uh, then how do I allocate the memory for that? So this is how I will be allocating the memory. So here I will be specifying the row and column size. So that's what you need to mention because I have to mention for both there in one dimension, I just had only one row. Okay. So, but when it comes to the two dimension array, I have to mention the row as well as column size. This is very important point that you need to remember, sir. How exactly I will get to know how many number of elements that I have here. So that's a very important point. So here you are specifying the row size and the column size. But when it comes to the one dimensional array, so guys, you are just specifying the number of elements that you can have in one row. There is a difference. Okay, that's what you need to remember. Here I will specify how many number of rows and how many number of columns. There in one dimension, how many number of elements. So that's an important thing that you need to remember when it comes to the two dimensional array. All right, so hope you understood. So this is how I will be initializing the value when it comes to the two dimensional array. So guys, what is that I will be doing? So I will just open the flower bracket. Okay, this is the main flower bracket. Inside this, this is one row. That is the first row, second row. In each row, three, three elements I have. If I have like that, I will do it. Or if I can also have four, four elements, five, five elements. How exactly I have defined my array. So based on that, I will be initializing the values. That's what you need to observe okay this is how we initialize the two dimensional array so hope you got the basic idea about one dimensional array and two dimensional array but it's very important that you need to observe about variable size array when it comes to the two dimensional array so here what happens is all the row size is equal row size in the sense say for example uh, in this two dimensional array imagine i have three rows and three columns the number of elements that I have in each row is 3. That's what you need to observe here. But when it comes to the variable size array, it is not like that. So in each row, you can specify individually how many number of elements that you want to have. So that is the most important concept that you need to understand with respect to the variable size array. Variable size array is more than one dimensional array. Okay. So, but each row, you can specifically mention the number of elements that you can have inside the row. That's what you need to observe here. So fine, observe what I have here. I'm just declaring the array here. That's basically two dimensional array. But observe here, I'm just specifying the row. I'm not specifying the column here. I'm just leaving it empty. That's what you need to notice it here. So fine. Now here in this, I'm just specifying. So guys, observe the first row has got two elements. I'm just specifying how many number of elements that I can have in the first row. That's what I'm doing it here. Observe x of zero is equal to new. New in the sense what I'm allocating the memory. I'm allocating the memory for the first row. So how many elements that you can store in the first row? I'm able to store two elements. So in the second row, what happens? Three elements. Third row, how many elements? Five elements. My array will look like this. So in the first row, how many elements? Two elements. So fine. So when it comes to the second row, how many elements? Three elements. Observe here. When it comes to the third element, I will be having five elements. This is how it looks. This is how it looks when it comes to the variable size array. Each row will have different different size, which you can specify it here. All right. So first you will just specify only the number of rows that you need. Then after that, so you can start specifying the size individually. Okay. So that's what you need to remember. This is all about the variable size array. Moving forward to the next important topic that you have, you can expect a question on this. That is array list class. We have a namespace. Okay, we have a namespace called collection. So collection has got one of the best class called array list. Namespace is a collection of related classes in that I have one of the class called array list. So array list has got some of the predefined methods which will help me to perform a lot of operations on an array. So what exactly is that? Let's understand that in detail one by one. So guys, 
imagine this is a class as I told you array list is a class I'm creating an object for this class this is a predefined class that is a one more important thing that you need to remember so fine for this class I'm creating an object as cities observe here I'm trying to create the object for this city and I'm, I'm trying to allocate the memory with the help of the new keyword so which you, all of you know and then how many objects are you trying to create I'm trying to create 30 objects the capacity of this object is I'll be able to store 30 objects that's what you need to observe here all right that's what you need to observe here that's 30 in the sense I'll be able to accommodate 30 objects here so fine what exactly this object is all about so this array list is able to or capable of storing the objects array of objects so that's what you need to remember here I repeat I'm trying to create the array list and array list is able to store the objects here so how many objects this array list is able to store so I, this array list that is the cities are able to store 30 objects this is what you need to observe here so fine how do I store what are the methods that I have which I can perform with respect to this array of lists let's check that so guys this is the methods that I have so what exactly this methods observe here I have a method called add so which will help me to add the object to the list so that's what you need to observe here as an object to the list and then I have clear, it clears, it removes everything from the list. And I have contains, it will tell me what is that I have in the list. And I have copy too, okay, from one list to another list, I will be able to copy. So insert, it will help me to insert an element into the list. That's what you need to observe. There is a difference between add and insert. So what is the major difference? Do you have to tell me, all right? So in the comment box. Next, I have remove. So it helps me to remove an element. So that's what you need to remove. So guys, remove the first occurrence. Say for example, I have to remove 10. So I imagine I have two times 10. If I use the operation uh, or the method remove, it will remove the first occurrence. But if you use remove at, remove at is what? What is the difference between remove and remove at? In remove at, you will specify the index particularly you remove that that is what you will specify with respect to the remove at remove range you will specify on range 0 to 5 you remove everything so that is what will happen when it comes to the remove range and then you have sort sort will help me to you know sort the objects in a order ascending order and descending order that's what you need to remember capacity so capacity will give me the capacity how many number of objects that i can store in the array list that is what I will get to know from this and count will tell me how many number of objects right now I have in the list this is a very very important thing you need to remember with respect to the exam point of view you can expect this question in your paper so please go through this methods so let me just show you one program with respect to this which will help you you know which will help you to get understand with respect to these concepts you know programmatically so guys i'm using the namespace call system and then system dot collection so now i know i need to have a semicolon here then followed by the name of the class is city and observe you have a main method and then of course i should have a parenthesis and semicolon here and i should uh, specify the size say for example i can also have 30 here so then after that how do i use add is a question that you had so observe here I'm, I'm creating an object for this uh, array list here and then n dot hat so madras is a uh, what you have to whatever you want within double quotes you can just specify it and you can just add it in the same way n dot add bombay so that's a typing mistake that they have done right so n dot add anand n dot calicut whatever the things that you have so you are just adding you are just pushing into the list that's what you need to observe here and then after that you have console dot right line so guys you are you are just trying to print the capacity of this array list then after that observe here what is that we have n dot count n dot count and this is the number of elements so the number of objects that we have in the array is what i'm trying to print and then i have n dot sort it will sort in the ascending order that's what you need to remember then after that so observe here after performing this sort i will try to print one by one then after that i will just try to perform remove add so i'm just passing the index to remove a particular item from the index number four then after that i'll try to print one by one this is how my array list is working so this is a brief introduction and the completion of Hare and Link. So guys, hope you have uh, enjoyed and learned quickly without wasting much of your time. So I'm at the end of the session. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.